Okay, hello everybody. Hello, hello, and welcome. What is going on, folks? It's time. It's time for the big return, right? I am back to full-time gameplay streaming every single day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> In fact, today is Monday, October 9th, 2017. And today is officially the beginning of what I guess we could call um, the crazy-ass gaming season of the year. Uh, officially, because starting today, uh, we are going to be doing non-stop new AAA game releases every single day. <clears throat> I mean, just to give you perspective on the amount of new releases I'll be playing in the next two months, we've got Middle Earth Shadow of War starting tonight. Later this week, we've got The Evil Within 2. We've got South Park The Fractured But Whole next week. We've actually got... Um, Three new releases on the same day near the end of this month, including Assassin's Creed Origins, Wolfenstein, The New Colossus, and Super Mario Odyssey. And then, next month, we've got Call of Duty World War II, Sonic Forces, Need for Speed Payback, Star Wars Battlefront II, and there may be a few other episodic game releases and such in that mix. Um, we've got a ridiculously crazy two months ahead of us, folks. Seriously. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be crazy. But it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And I hope that you guys are looking forward to it as well. Um, two straight months of me covering all the new releases. You know, streaming as much as I possibly can. Whether it's double streams every day. Sometimes I'll be doing midnight release special streams like tonight. I'll be doing that for Middle Earth Shadow of War. <clears throat> I'm pretty excited. <clears throat> I am pretty excited for the next two months. And I hope that you're excited as well to join me daily. <clears throat> for whatever the new game release may be, okay? So let's talk, folks. Today is the Monday the 9th. Today, right now, is going to be a three to four hour long um, Spyro the Dragon gameplay stream. Okay, I'm continuing on. This is the Patron's Choice playthrough for the fall. And I'm already more than halfway through it. If you're not aware, I've played it two sessions so far. And I'm already in World 4. Last session, I tackled what people told me was the toughest stage in the entire game to 100%. <laughs> it was the stage with the treetops where you had to do a triple ramp dash in order to jump to the hidden area and get the final hidden dragon and the gems. I managed to do it, but it took an hour for me to figure out how to do this. Um, pretty ridiculously difficult, in my opinion, for something to put into a kid's game. Um, but hey... You know, back in the day, these games were unforgiving and gruelingly difficult. So not surprising to see that something that ridiculously tough was actually put into a children's game. Outside of that, the rest of the game actually <clears throat> has not been so challenging to me. In, in fact, I would actually say the game has been quite easy up to that point. It was that one stage that really, there was this insane difficulty uh, spike. So, I like the game. I do. I'm enjoying it. It's a game that, yes, there's a lot to do in it. You have to search for all the gems and everything. But at the same time, it's actually quite uh, almost relaxing for me, I would say. Except for that one stage with the, with the ramps. The game has been pretty relaxing and pretty interesting to try to uh, figure out, you know, what I needed to do in order to get 100% and all that stuff. So, yes, folks. Uh, very excited to be back. Hope that you're excited. Uh, for me being back, and uh, to be doing this constant new gameplay, okay? <laughs> now, tonight, folks, I will not be doing a normal second stream. Typically, my, if I do a second stream, it usually starts around 7.30 to 8 p.m., but tonight I'm doing something different. Tonight is the premiere of Middle-Earth Shadow of War. <clears throat> and in honor of that being released, I have decided that I will be doing a special release night stream it actually unlocks on my PS4 at 9 p.m. my time. So yes, it'll be 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern time. I'll be playing Middle Earth Shadow of War for about two hours tonight on stream. <clears throat> okay. Sound good? So that's going to be tonight. Two hours of that. And then for the, you know, the major majority of this week, I'll be playing Middle Earth Shadow of War constantly to get as far as I possibly can in the game before... The big release of The Evil Within 2 later this week, which I will also be doing a special release night stream this coming Thursday night at 9 p.m. Uh, my local time. <clears throat> Sound good? 
pretty good, right? It's going to be a lot of these nighttime release streams this month. I've decided pretty much every time there's going to be a major release, I'm going to do a special nighttime release stream. So that means that, yes, for South Park, I'll be doing it. Yes, that night when there's three games coming out, I'll be doing it. Which game? I'm not sure yet. But I know for a fact that Mario probably won't be out at 9 p.m. <laughs> so more than likely, it'll probably either be Wolfenstein or Assassin's Creed that I do as the nighttime stream. And then the daytime stream will be one of the other games. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty excited. Pretty excited. I, I am. I really am. Um, you know, this. I love this time of year. Number one, it's cooled down dramatically here in Washington. Right now, it's 50 degrees. So within two weeks, we went from 80 degree temperatures, super hot sweltering, to 50 degrees. And it's cloudy every day, and we're getting rain, and it's the rainy fall season. It is officially hit. It's very different here now than it, it has been, that's for sure. Which means my office, it's actually nice and comfy. It's a cool in my office. It's nice. It's uh, That's what I like about this, this time of year. It's very busy. I got to stream a lot. But at the same time, it's very comfortable in my gaming setup, which is really awesome. <clears throat> so... Yes, yes, yes. Very excited, everybody. I got a lot of updates for everyone, so I hope that you're all ready for a few updates. First of all, let's talk about what's going on currently with the Halloween Horror Marathon, okay? Um, Rick, I, I said Rick, and I said Rick because someone just did a Rick and Morty cheer. Excuse me. I will talk about this. Don't worry. I'm going to be re reacting to <clears throat> all of the people who are cheering in just a few minutes, so please be patient. Um, so... Yes, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the Halloween Horror Marathon. First of all, in regards to the games to be played, right now, many, many, many horror-themed games are being nominated. Uh, some of the top nominations right now are Friday the 13th, Call of Cthulhu, um, uh, Nine in the Woods, uh, Shattered Hill, uh, Shattered Hill, oh my god, Silent Hill Shattered Memories, and a few others are kind of the top nominations but there will be a poll that will be formulated about a week before the marathon based on the nomination. So if you were a patron in the month of September and you have not nominated on horror games yet, you definitely should head over to the kinghate.com forums and nominate a game right away. <clears throat> get those nominations in, folks. Get them in, get them in. Because the voting will start within about two weeks. And then we're going to have that final week of voting of patrons on what games will be played on Halloween during the marathon. Okay. Now, in addition, as of last night, I put up the poll by which patrons are now voting on the category of costume that I will be wearing for Halloween. Now, only a few people have voted. I actually looked at only like 20 people voted. But right now, overwhelmingly, people seem to want me to dress up as some kind of a video game character for Halloween. Now, I've seen a bunch of different fun Halloween costumes of video game characters um, that I could dress up as. I've seen, you know, classic video game characters, more modern video game characters, more niche ones. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of good costumes out there in the modern era, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> it's certainly not like when I was a kid, when good luck getting any kind of, you know, uh, care, uh, Halloween costume... That you didn't make yourself that had to do with like mainstream pop culture. Back then it was all like primarily if you wanted to go out on Halloween. <clears throat> you were doing one of the Halloween, you know, classic horror villains. Or you were wearing one of those shitty, uh, it's not even plastic. It was more like fucking, I don't even know, like a petroleum suit. It was like <laughs> this weird fake material you would get in to make you look like the character. And it was like sweaty as shit inside of it. And you'd wear one of these shitty masks that was made of plastic and it hurt your face with a rubber band that would leave a fucking mark on the back of your head when you wore it. The, the Halloween costumes when I was a kid were terrible. Today, it's so different. Today, it's like the, it's, everything is so crazy, uh, complicated and dedicated. And the Halloween costumes, that you know, all these freaking Halloween stores popping up all over the place with these high quality costumes, you know. And during my time off, I, I went to five of them. To see what they had. And I actually shared some pictures on Instagram. Of the stuff that I saw. Um, so that being said folks. Uh, I have a couple ideas of things. That I could do for any category. Right now certainly the voting is just started. So it's not that a video game character. Is definitely what I'm going to be for Halloween. Because it just started. The voting okay. <clears throat> so. If you are a patron again. 
in the month of uh, September, please head to the forums and vote on what category of Halloween costume you would like to see me wear during the uh, during that marathon. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what people vote and how it turns out. Okay, <laughs> sound good? All right. <clears throat> okay. Now, outside of the current patron stuff going on, folks, I want to start talking about this month's Patreon goal, all right? Because I certainly don't want to forget it and then, you know, people don't think about pledging this month. This month's goal, I have not set it up yet. I have to set it up on the website. I may do so tonight. <clears throat> we'll see if I have time to do it. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat today, by the way. Excuse me, everybody. I don't know what's going on in my throat. <clears> throat> Stupid frog is stuck in there. I can't clear it properly. <clears throat> oh, I hate it when that happens. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway, folks. Um, now I'm confused. <laughs> anyway, folks. Um, yes, this month's current Patreon goal. Let's talk about that because I have not set it up yet. It is the Player Unknown Battlegrounds or Player Unknown's Battlegrounds goal. What does that mean? It means that if you pledge to my Patreon this month, and if we hit the funding goal this month, I will be doing a seven-plus-hour-long marathon of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. All right. Um, if the game releases on the Xbox One in time for the marathon, which I'm planning to do in late November, by the way, <clears throat> then I'll play it on the Xbox One. But if it does not release in time <clears throat> on consoles for this event, then I am going to be doing it on PC, which I know is a rarity for me. I almost never play anything on PC. I'm actually going to do a special arrangement where I'm only live streaming and not capturing. So that way I can do, stream it, this marathon. And then what I'll do is I'll take the marathon archive that auto-generates on Twitch. <clears throat> and I'll personally go in there for, you know, and split it up into, say, half an hour chunks. And I will export those videos uh, to YouTube. So that I will have the videos for YouTube for those who were not able to be there um, for the marathon, okay? So, I'm excited. You know, this is the game that everyone talks about. Everyone says that PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is the best version of the uh, Battle Royale style gameplay game out there. It's the number one game on Steam. Like, everyone is playing it. So, I obviously want to get in on this. But being that it's a busy holiday gaming season here, you know, I don't really have time... So, if we hit the funding goal this month on Patreon, I'll have time because I'll set aside a whole day to play this game and experience it with all of you, okay? <clears throat> now, folks, you have to think of it this way, okay? Um, previously, there were game franchises that I did not have a chance to experience, and because of the Patreon, uh, you know, uh, goals, I was able to play these games and basically experience them for the first time and, under and enjoy them. For example... Minecraft, that was a game that for years I didn't understand. I never played it. I didn't get it. I kind of talked shit about it. And then when I finally played it in early 2015, my eyes were opened. I was like, wow, this actually is something kind of very different and interesting. <clears throat> you know, pretty excited to uh, experience it when I did. And I played it, I ended up playing it way more than I had committed to because I wanted to see what the game was all about. Then I ended up playing games like Yakuza and Persona. You know, franchises that I never even knew anything about them. And then when I finally played the mainstream games as a result of pa the patrons, um, they ended up being not only fun game series, but series that I continued. I played the sequels and everything, right? Um, so definitely I could see, again, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds potentially becoming... Something that, you know, becomes an ongoing series if it's something that I enjoy. And if it's anything like Fortnite's uh, Battle Royale style uh, gameplay was, which I played over a week ago, um, I could definitely see it being something that I like. We'll have to see, though. You know, it, it, the, the definite thing is I've heard that there's, like, a lot of variations in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds that make it different from Fortnite and make it better than Fortnite. So I'm pretty excited to test it out. Um... 
So we'll see, folks. Um, I, I hope we hit the funding goal. Right now, we're way under, but that's because, I mean, I was at time off. So obviously, no one's going to be pledging to my Patreon when I'm at time off, away from streaming and everything, okay? <clears throat> so as of today, I'm going to start mentioning it daily. I'm probably going to set up a title card here in the intro as well for pre-streams so people know about the goal. Um, yeah, so please, if you want to see me play that game in a fun marathon and experience it for the first time, please pledge this month. Right now, I believe we are a good $300 or something like that. I actually think it's less than $300. I think it's like $250 or something below the funding goal for this month. Um, but we could easily hit it. Listen, last month we were $200 under within like three days of the end of the month. And then we went, we over, we went over the goal. <laughs> so we could definitely do it again. <clears throat> Keep in mind that anything that you pledge to my Patreon directly... A lot, uh, supports my efforts to daily live stream and play all the hot new releases. All right. It helps me pay the bills, like the electricity, the cost of games, uh, all this stuff. It's, it's, it's funding that I depend on in order to keep doing this. Okay. So please consider pledging if you have not yet. All right. Patreon.com forward slash dark side fill. And of course you also get personal perks as well. I won't really talk about those, but check out the website for all the information. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now, ladies and gents, I also want to just give a quick shout out to my Teespring, the merchandise store where you can buy cool t-shirts, mugs, sweatshirts. Right now, boy, with the temperatures dipping the way that they have in Washington State, you're probably interested more in a hoodie or a sweatshirt than a t-shirt. <laughs> so check it out. You know, I have all these cool designs from fans, all fan-made uh, artwork and designs, good stuff, high-quality stuff. Um, I wear these, these shirts in my videos frequently. I drink from the Skull Mug every single day on stream. <clears throat> Pretty good stuff. So please consider, uh, you know, buying something. And if you do, I get a pretty sizable commission that helps me out. Keep in mind, the holidays are right around the corner. Maybe you want to buy it, something as a gift for uh, another loved one or a friend who's a fan of mine. Uh, give it a look. And consider maybe picking something up. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, if you are here live on stream, you obviously have the ability to cheer, sub, and tip during the course of the stream. I am very appreciative of anything that you contribute during the course of the stream. And if you do any of those things, I will give you a verbal shout out. In fact, there are a bunch of people who already have been cheering during the pre-stream, and I will give you credit in just a moment. Okay. Now, if you cheer 50 bits or more, if you subscribe to the channel and click the share button, or if you tip me $2 or more, you'll actually get an on-screen pop-up notification, all right? So you'll be getting double recognition. You get the pop-up recognition, and then you also get verbal recognition from me, okay? <clears throat> Pretty cool, right? So, um, if you do choose to contribute today... I would ask this. This is the pretty much the final day I have to ask this, okay? But if you do choose to contribute, I would ask if you could please tip me. Because tips I get right away. And by the way, I'll be very honest with everybody. Um, I barely had enough to afford Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now what I mean by that is to, without racking up more debt. Meaning not charging it to a credit card or whatever. Um, I have been, for the past few months, spending all my tip money, basically. Any money that I get from tips to buy the new games... <laughs> And I basically used all of it, you know, buying up all the new games recently and, and, you know, paying for stuff. So I got it last night. I was like, wow, I really emptied the account there. <clears throat> so, you know, any tips that you lend would help me out. It'll obviously allow me to get the Evil Within uh, later this week without racking up more debt. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here, okay? But the good news is, this week I get paid. Finally, this week I get paid for the awesome August performance that I had both here on Twitch and also on YouTube. So I don't really have to bring this up anymore after tomorrow when I get paid. So as of tomorrow, anything you want to do, whether it's cheering, subbing, or tipping, it's all equal to me. But I would say as of today, if you could please tip me, I would appreciate it. It'll allow me to get the evil within later this week. Okay? Sound good? Sound good, folks? Okay. Okay. So, let's do some shout-outs. Hold on a second. I gotta actually scroll down here. <clears throat> Urgh, come on. 
Okay, my la I'm trying to get my laptop to work. It was lagging up here. Um, in fact, yeah, I didn't update. Hold on. I gotta refresh my Muxy on my laptop. I didn't update. Because I know some people actually cheered. And also, I got a few tips overnight. And I want to give some shout-outs to those people. Hold on a second here. Here we go. Okay. So, overnight, I got a few shout-outs. Uh, both Boz2161, as well as Golden Colts, did some cheering overnight. In fact, Boz did over 500 bits, and Golden Colts did... Uh, about 500 bits. So thank you to both of you guys for your overnight cheers. I appreciate it again that those who are here and maybe you're not here when I'm streaming, but you support my stuff and you want to see me keep doing it. I'm very appreciative uh, of all of you. So, uh, you know, supporting me in that regard. Thank you very much. And, you know, it's awesome that you're coming even when I'm not streaming and cheering. That is so nice of you. <clears throat> Shout out to C. Dick. C. Dick tipped me $5 and said, missed the last stream since I was at work. I hope all is well. Yes, last night's stream, I played Star Wars Battlefront 2, um, the beta, and quite honestly, I was not too impressed um, with that. I'm not really going to say much else about it. If you want to see my thoughts on it, you should watch the videos, obviously. They're live on DSP Gaming, but yeah, it was a good return stream. I had good attendance. I was surprised for a, a late night stream like that, that I had as many people as I did on the stream. I was very pleased. So, thank you for that, and uh, thank you, C-Dick, for the tip. <clears throat> okay. Now on to the cheers. It looks like Boz2161 actually did a 50-bit cheer just as I started streaming today. So thank you, Boz, for, again for the support. I appreciate that. That Anonymous did a 10-bit cheer. He says, hey, Philly, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. You forgot to say, hey, Philly. Hey, Philly. But I'll add that to the end. There you go. Thank you, Anonymous, for the cheer. I appreciate it. Shout out to BL Raven Wizard. Who did a 15-bit cheer and said, welcome back, Phil. Thank you, BL Raven Wizard. That Anonymous also did a 51-bit cheer and said, fuck you, cheerleader. So he wanted to become the cheerleader for today's stream, so he did a 51-bit cheer. Uh, that Anonymous then did another 10-bit cheer. And he said, will you still play WWE 2K18 if it's donated? If so, I'll make it happen. Yes, I've said this, folks. It's this simple. WWE used to be a staple game that I would cover every single year. And if you remember, the WWE games used to have really fun story-based campaign modes where they followed through the careers of certain wrestlers or certain plot lines. Remember, they had the Attitude Era. Then they had the year where it followed, like, the career of Triple H and Shawn Michaels and the, the Stone Cold Steve Austin stuff. They were really good. Then all of a sudden last year, they decided to scrap all of that. They said, oh, we don't need any of that content anymore. We're just going to get rid of that. Um... And instead of having that fun content that everyone always played and enjoyed, we're just going to say, oh, we're going to improve the uh, career mode of the game. All right. Sadly, it actually <laughs> didn't turn out that way, in my opinion, actually. Um, the actual uh, campaign or the uh, career mode of the game wasn't improved at all. After playing it for just a few sessions, I was bored as hell. And I think that really, you know, 2K games, they promised these improvements that just didn't really happen to the game. So essentially what you did, you paid full price for a game that had less features than the previous years. And I did play, you know, I played the career mode and I did do one, I did Christmas Sims, if you guys remember. But after that, I really had no motivation to ever go back to the game. I really didn't. Like, I was so disappointed with the game that I never went back to play it again, okay? Okay. Now, here's the thing. After all that happened, after I stopped playing the WWE game last year, I, you know, left my, my, my managed partnership. I'm now in a regular partnership with Curse. And when that happened, folks, um, sadly, I lost my protections and Content ID really reared its ugly head against my videos. Thousands upon thousands of my videos this year have been content ID claimed, meaning basically I don't get any advertisement revenue on them. In the worst case scenario, some of the videos got muted and blocked worldwide, which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. But hey, it's not my situation. It's not uh, my, my process. It's YouTube's process. And we all know that YouTube is horribly broken. Okay. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is no exaggeration. Every single video of WWE gameplay that I've done over the years that featured any music whatsoever of WWE, any video that had any music, any entrance music, anything, got claimed. 
And therefore, every WWE video, I make no money on now. <laughs> now, just think about how many years I covered WWE games, right? How many years? And all that stuff was stolen from me, basically, by YouTube's content ID match system. What a stupid fucking piece of shit. Um... So, people all this year have been asking me, Phil, are you going to be playing the WWE 2K18? Are you following WWE 2K18? And I keep telling them, no, not really. I'm not following it. I don't really care because if I play it, I'm going to make no money on it. And, again, apparently there's no real campaign mode. So, if there's no campaign, and that, that was one of the main reasons why I played it, and I can't even have, you know, music in my fucking videos, then why am I going to play this game? Plus, you got to keep in mind, folks, the game comes out the same week as South Park, which is a game I'm going to be heavily focusing on. And so, you know, would I essentially have a ton of time to focus on it when it releases? Maybe not. Not to say that I have to play it then, because we all know that the WWE games, you can play them whenever. It's not like, oh, you have to play it to story mode. You have to play it right away. It's not like that. <clears throat> but still, you know, essentially the game's a new release and I may not be able to play it as a highlighted new release because I'll be inundated with so many other new releases at the time. So basically, I left it at that. Now, the past couple of months, a bunch of people have been messaging me and saying, Phil, are you going to play it? Are you going to play it? I'm like, no, I already said I'm not playing it. But since some people have been offering, it's not just that anonymous here, but a bunch of people have actually been offering to donate the game to me if I were to play it, okay? So I'm going to say it publicly like this, okay? If the game were to be donated to me, if someone were to send me the digital code to get the game on PS4, then yes, I will play it. To what extent I will actually play it, I can't ex really tell you because I'm not even sure what content is in the game this year because I haven't been following it. I mean, being real honest, I just haven't cared about it because of the, the, the kind of change of my situation. I have I don't even know what I would do in it. Obviously, I would probably do some Sims. I'd probably do like the holiday Sims like I usually do. But I wouldn't know exactly what it would entail, you know, do you want to see me do career mode again, which is probably going to be fucking the same as last year, again, grinding through boring repetitive matches, again, you know what I mean, so, I don't know, I don't know what I would do, but, if the game were donated to me, if I were to get, get a digital code on PS4 or whatever, then yes, I would at least play it, and I would explore the game and see what's in it, what I would have to do is completely mute all music, so I'd have to mute all, there'd be no music at all, it would be completely silent. As the characters come out, silence, no entrance music or anything. <clears throat> Which I know sounds really fucking stupid, but that's YouTube's dumb fuck system. They apparently want everyone to play video games silently because they're fucking idiots. So yeah, so that's what I would do. So if you're interested in donating the game to me, email me at darksidephilathotmail.com. Let me know the details, alright, we'll work them out. And I'll let everyone know how that goes. I don't know if anyone's actually going to donate it to me or not. A few people have mentioned it, but then again, earlier this year, a few people also mentioned they would donate games to me, and they never did. So, I don't know, you know, we'll have to see what happens here, okay? <clears throat> okay, shout out to Octoa, who did a 10-bit cheer, and he says, please give me the 50-degree weather. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's really nice here. Um, it's really, it was very nice during my time off, you know, I was able to, to drive around and do stuff and not melt in the sun like I'd been doing the past two to three months. It was very relaxing, and I really like this weather. At night, I'm able to sleep calmly and soundly, so. <clears throat> okay. Shout out to Wharton, who cheered 55 bits. At that point, he had become the cheerleader for today's stream, and he said, Rick and Morty fans are started rioting and getting into fist fights over chicken nugget sauce at various McDonald's a few days ago. The police had to come and shut down several restaurants for the day. What is your take on the situation? All right, I have two things to say, because I see two sides of the situation. Number one, if you're a huge fan of Rick and Morty and McDonald's promises they're going to be bringing a sauce related to the show to their stores as a special promotional event for fans of Rick and Morty, you might get really excited and you might want to participate. Is it a big deal? No, but it's maybe something fun, especially if you had nothing to do that day. You want to go by your local McDonald's and try out this sauce, right? Sadly, there's a ridiculous amount of fans of Rick and Morty, and they all came at once. We had lines around certain McDonald's you know, for hour-long lines to try to get this sauce. So... You know, okay, it's a cool cultural event, whatever. It's fun. <clears throat> Sadly, what McDonald's failed to tell anybody was that there were only going to be 20 packets of this Szechuan sauce per store. They never disclosed this information, probably honestly, because they knew if they did, no one would show up. 
Who would have showed up when they know there's only 20 packets? You know, the first guy's going to get them, and that's it. So, basically, McDonald's was very dishonest about the whole thing, and it was basically a publicity stunt to try to get people to come to McDonald's. Problem was, it completely backfired because so many people showed up for the sauce, and they had so little that literally fights broke out, protests broke out. Now, I have something to say about this, folks. Okay, I do. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're an adult, you need to learn how to pick your fights, and you need to learn how to be a mature adult about certain things. If you, of your own volition, decided to go to a local fast food restaurant to get a special sauce because it has a tie-in with a cartoon show that you watch for entertainment purposes... Ladies and gentlemen, this is not an important thing. It's not. It's not important. In the scheme of things, all right, it's not important. Ladies and gentlemen, on this planet, there are people who are starving. There are people who are freezing to death. There are people who have terrible diseases, all right, and are dying. These things are far fucking more important than Szechuan sauce, you dumb shits. Good God. What is up with these people who think that these, these stupid, talk about privileged life, right? Talk about first world problems. You want to talk about first world problems. On the other side of the planet, there are people who every day when they get out of their homes, they got to dodge fucking bullets, right? Because their, their countries are in political and civil unrest. Here, we have to riot because we can't get fucking chicken nugget sauce. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. Seriously, like, oh my god. In life, you really need to pick your battles, folks. There are way more fucking important things in life than a fucking chicken nugget sauce. So, if you were one of the people who lined up to get the sauce, okay. If you're one of the people that started a riot or protested because McDonald's didn't have the sauce, you're a fucking idiot. Seriously, look in the mirror and reprioritize your life because you are a moron. Like, what the fuck? You should realize how privileged you fucking are if the biggest concern in your life you couldn't get Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce for your fucking chicken nuggets. Grow the fuck up. There you go. That's my opinion on the subject. Alright, shout out to Boz2161 who did a 20-bit cheer. Thank you, Boz, again for the support. Shout out to Yolo Dopper who did a 10-bit cheer. He says, I'm watching you from Germany. Glad to see MVCI Salty Sundays are continuing. Um, well, I didn't say they were. I don't know where you got that impression. In fact, in the week in preview, I said, I don't know if I'm going to be continuing right now for at least for the short term. More than likely, I'm not doing them. Um, because I'm probably going to be covering all the new releases the next few weeks. I'm not saying that I'll never go back to fighting games on Sunday. I'm just saying probably, especially this weekend, I'll be so busy with the evil within that I probably will not be doing fighting games. So I hope you didn't get any kind of a misconception. Okay. <clears throat> Always remember, I guess trying to be funny, doing some kind of a meme for, for the mentally challenged with the stupid re meme, which really is just for dumb fuck people. Did a hundred bit cheer and says, I heard they tailored Battlefront 2 for more skilled, experienced FPS players. Could be good. What do you think? I think you're wrong. It is not tailored for good, experienced FPS players. First of all, Battlefront should not be a first person shooter. Battlefront is supposed to be a third person action game. Just because they have a first-person perspective in the game, and it's basically a skin over Battlefield, doesn't mean that that's what the game's supposed to be. Number two, the game is not for skilled people. If anyone saw the beta gameplay last night, it was horrendously garbage. It was just chuck grenades at doors, <laughs> and find choke points, and just cheaply shoot people. It really wasn't anything that was for skilled players. It was more kind of just a crappy... It was really generic, in my opinion. Like, it didn't feel like it had a unique Star Wars identity. It felt kind of like, um, in a lot of ways, different Battlefield games, even Bad Company, to some extent. You know, there's a lot of similarities to other games from that franchise. Um, so, I hate to say it, but I was really not impressed at all, um, at all. In regards to the beta, and I don't think it's a very good game. I think that you are completely wrong. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <clears throat> Level Power did a 10-bit cheer and said, Supr DSP surprised skeletons. Ah, I see. So my running joke that I'm afraid of skeletons. Um, thank you, Level Power, for the cheer. I appreciate that. Whoa, I got an anonymous $30 tip. And it says, I reached rank 140 in Battlefield 4. 
Well, congratulations. I don't know much about that. Battlefield 4 <clears throat> is what? Um, do you, was Battlefield 4 the one from years ago? It was, right? That re The one like, for that like coincided with the launch of the PS4, right? I think so. Well, anyway, thank you to whoever gave me the, the, the anonymous $30 tip. I appreciate that. And no lie, that money's going straight towards buying the Evil Within later this week. Hopefully, I'll round up enough um, to to buy the game by the end of the week. Thank you to King of Hypocrisy for a 10-bit cheer. He says, I've done it, stream chat. I turn myself into a pickle. I'm Pickle Phil. Shout out to Bordeaux FR, who did a 105-bit cheer and has become the cheerleader for today's stream. He says, Phil, if you ever watched Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, he posts the main segment from his show every week on YouTube if you don't have HBO. Um, I've seen segments from the show, but I do not watch it as I don't have HBO, and I don't watch YouTube videos. So there's your answer. <clears throat> Marky Mark did a 10-bit cheer, and he says, My six-year-old son is sad by calling people boring on Instagram who are planning on wearing a hot dog costume for Halloween. He is getting his. Well, I mean, let's be honest here, folks. A hot dog costume for Halloween is kind of boring. It's not very exciting. Um, it's a hot dog. You look like a hot dog, all right? If you're looking for a simple costume, you just pop on and, and be a hot dog. But I think it's a boring costume, and that's my opinion. Sorry that your six-year-old son is sad about it, but that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. I mean, it's not the worst costume. By far, the worst costumes I saw were that, that fucking dude... That selfie mask. Are you kidding me? You put a mask on your face that looks like a smartphone. So it looks like you took a selfie. Oh, look, I'm a selfie. And that's your Halloween costume. Dude, that is the worst costume I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. All right. Um. Shout out to that Anonymous who did a 10-bit cheer. He says, WWE 2K18 actually revamped my career. Since you don't, since you didn't follow it. You free roam backstage and you gain progress faster. I will 100% donate it if no one else does. <clears throat> um, cool. I mean, if that is the case, awesome. Like I said, last year they claimed they revamped the career mode and I thought it sucked. So, if they really did revamp it this year, good. Um, and again, I would consider playing it if it is donated, okay? Shout out to Golden Colts who did 100 bit cheer. Thank you, Golden Colts, for the ongoing support. I appreciate that. Thank you to... Ultimate Boss 45134, who did a 100 bit cheer. He says, This guy has a fucking latte from McDonald's as his picture. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know what that's a reference to. I don't think I ever said that. That's not me saying that, right? I wonder what that's a reference to. I have no idea. But anyway, thank you for the 100 bit cheer. Um, 47766 did a 10 bit cheer and says, Is Christopher Columbus a villain? Apparently, he is now. Uh, when I grew up, I was actually, uh, <clears throat> I was told and, and, you know, educated at school that Christopher Columbus was a world traveler, explorer, an innovator, and a hero, and a great man, and he discovered America inadvertently. He didn't know he had discovered America. He had thought that he got to India, but he was in America, and he met the Indians and all this stuff. Now, apparently, you know, everyone says, well, he's a horrible person. He basically showed up and slaughtered everyone and, and claimed that he owned the land. And today, we shouldn't celebrate Columbus Day anymore. We should celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day because those people don't really exist anymore. And their ancestors' land was stolen. And it's horrible and slaughter and terrible. <laughs> so, I don't know. Listen, I'm no history buff. I don't know the true story of Christopher Columbus. I'll be honest with everyone. I don't care about Christopher Columbus. <laughs> I really don't give a shit about Christopher Columbus. Sorry to say, maybe he's famous, maybe he's infamous, maybe he was a hero, maybe he was a villain. I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> I live in the modern era, and sorry, but I don't care about Christopher Columbus, so there you go. <clears throat> okay, then. I got another anonymous $5 tip, and, it's, and it the question with it is, did you enjoy Battlefield 4? Um, if it, again, if it is the game that I'm thinking, wasn't that the one that released in the, uh, <clears throat> with the, the, like, it was that launch year of the PS4, then yes, I really liked that game. If you remember, I was good at that game. I was actually really good at it. I was playing it, you know, pretty consistently and enjoying it, um, 
and then I, you know, of course, other new releases came out, and I stopped playing it. But yeah, I really did like that game. I thought it was really good. Excuse me. Oh my god, I can't stop burping. Shout out to Blood Mage 420 who tipped me ten dollars. Thank you, Blood Mage. And he says, "Hey Phil, I enjoy your rants from now and then when I'm out jogging. Thanks for those, and best of luck with everything going on right now. Thank you, Blood Mage, for the tip and for the support. I appreciate it." Shout out to Bagwell Plays who did a hundred bit cheer. He says, "Red Dead Redemption Two is too far away, so here's some bits. Thank you. I am very much looking forward to Red Dead Redemption Two next year." Shout out to Kovaris, who did a 20 bit cheer. He says, Is it true that trans fall on the front lines? I have no idea. I just said, I literally just said, I'm no history buff. I know nothing about the historical combat and who served where. And, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> and shout out to Tanta Mounter, who just did a 200 bit cheer to become the cheerleader for today's stream. Thank you, Tantum Alta, for your ongoing support. I appreciate that. All right, ladies and gents. It is now time to start with Spyro. Listen, today's pre-stream was incredibly long, but I'm not surprised. Yeah, my, my actual portion of it was only about 15 to 20 minutes long, but I knew there's going to be a ton of cheers because I'm back. You know, it's my first day back from time off, so I knew people were going to be excited, okay? Thanks, everyone, for your support. I appreciate it. And... Let's get back into Spyro, okay? If you remember, I'm in World 4, and I did the treetop stage. I just 100%ed it, so I've still got the flying stage and two more regular stages and the boss all in World 4 to wrap it up, and then we'll, we'll head out to World 5. We'll see how far I get today, okay? Sound good? <clears throat> all right, everybody. Thank you very much for the support, and let's get back to Spyro. Here we go. 